Good evening, everyone. Um, it's Councillor Mary Locke here. I will say a kale and meal of alter as it's St Patrick's Day. I wish you all a happy St Patrick's Day. Welcome to Sturchley Councillor Ward Forum. Uh, this is being recorded live and will to be seen um, later on YouTube. We've got a, a, a quite a full programme tonight. Um, first person, the first person on the agenda is Dino Motti um, from Public Health and he's going to give us a COVID update. Over to you, Dino. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, I'm Dr Motti, I'm a public health registrar within the public health team at Birmingham City Council and tonight I would like to update you on COVID-19 numbers and a bit of history, regulation and testing. Uh, the seven day case rate between the 6th and the 12th of March in Birmingham is now of 75.7 cases per 100,000 population, which is a 15% decrease compared to last week, where, when it was at 88.5 80, on 100,000 population the previous week. And this is uh, a constant decline that we've seen. It's the, the product of the hard work that we've been doing with the lockdown, with testing and with vaccination. The, uh, this is a seven day rolling average that has been decreasing, as I said, compared to the previous week. And the rate now in Birmingham is the 48th highest in England, which uh, compares it to the upper, uh, other upper tier local authorities. Uh, the spread seems to be occurring mainly through household, social and workplace interactions at the moment. Hospital admissions range between 15 and 23 new cases a day at University Hospitals Birmingham. And uh, the uh, picture instead for Sturchley is uh, that Sturchley is out of 69 wards, the 67th uh, in terms of is the lowest, the 65th, sorry, the 65th out of 69. And it is uh, with the first being the highest in terms of infections and 69th being the lowest. So it's clear. Uh, we only had two reported cases in the last uh, seven day period. And in terms of rates is again, uh, among the lowest in terms of rate, and that is 19.80 uh, out of 100,000 population, which is compared to 73.3, as we said, for the whole of Birmingham. So it's significantly lower. Uh, the distribution in terms of population sees roughly 80% of cases in the group between 20 and 60, and it's roughly split in half. So between 20 and 40, we see about 40% and another 40% we, we see it between 40 and 60 years of age. The, uh, we, we've all the, been in this pandemic for roughly a year now and uh, we've seen ups and downs with different curves, different waves. The uh, ultimate uh, dynamic is that of lockdowns, which has led to us appreciating a progressive decline and as of late, the government has adopted a series of measures which will um, this time take five weeks to be updated because we want to see that slow progressive decline to be confirmed every, after every measure of relaxation has been implemented. So the latest has been with schools and then we'll see leisure and other uh, businesses reopen. But the government this time has chosen for that progressive relaxation to be uh, less, um, let's say, mixed so we can measure exactly what effect of each measure will be on the spread of the virus. There are parts of the country where the virus is spreading faster than in Birmingham at the moment, so we, we're still not out of the woods. The um, vaccination is proceeding um, at very good pace, especially compared to the rest of Europe, and we start to see those effects in the numbers. Uh, transmission in particular seems to be also affected by vaccination, which is a very good news, which we didn't have at the beginning when we started vaccinating. Vaccination is still at the moment targeted to those groups that are more likely to suffer from adverse events, hospitalization and even death. And that's why we are prioritizing the vaccination nationally, uh, the vaccination of the elderly, the vulnerable, those living in nursing homes and those caring for them. And now we're progressively moving down the age groups 
to vaccinate everybody and eventually reach herd immunity, which will uh, hopefully reduce the pandemic to a point where for the NHS is a lot more manageable and we can exit the state of emergency. But again, it's all uh, down to us to respect the regulation till they're lifted because they are working. The lockdown is working. We see it in the numbers and it's by collecting effort that we can return to normality through vaccination, testing and isolation when we test positive. Uh, just because I mentioned testing, just to repeat it, we, we probably all know this already, but uh, we have fundamentally two types of testing available. Testing for those of us who are symptomatic, which is the so-called PCR testing, which is led uh, nationally. If you have symptoms, you can go online and book on 111 the uh, test for um, COVID and you will then receive the kit. In terms of instead of asymptomatic testing for those of us that don't have symptoms but want to be tested regularly to make sure that we identify testing LFT, there are different uh, terms that are being used, acronyms, and that is mainly organized by the council. You can book it online. There are at the moment a number of sites across the city to get these. And it is a way to identify uh, an asymptomatic infection early so that you can uh, go to work if you have to or maintain your caring responsibility more safely for those that you care for. It is a rapid test that in 30 minutes or so gives you a result and following which you can be a bit more confident that you are either non-infectious or if you are that you can isolate and be safe for those around you. The, uh, as I was saying, uh, the um, progressive decline will be staggered, so we will see a beginning of declining cases, which we've seen for now quite a few weeks, which will be followed by decline in hospitalization, which will then be followed also by a decline in mortality and deaths. And all of these are just due to the fact that there is a cycle, a life cycle of the virus that takes unfortunately quite a while to be apparent throughout the chain of events that I just described. So uh, I can say that though the progressive nature of the decline is there and that we're noticing and uh, we're noticing in Birmingham and in the in the West Midlands in general. Um, otherwise, uh, for Sturgeley, the, 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 the curve is very similar in terms of ethnicity and other parameters are not dissimilar apart from the fact that Sturgeley is significantly lower in terms of cases and in terms of um, incidents. And I am here and I'm available for any questions if you may have them. Are there any questions, Medina? Put them in the uh, chat box on the on the side of the screen. Or if uh, have any questions come in? There are no questions as yet, um, uh, Councillor. Right. OK, if, any, if you think of any, just let let us put you in the question or, or let's. Um... I, I, if, if I may add just a couple of messages. Yeah. Which sorry, I don't know. What, OK, I am now I am now live myself. So one message is that you can join the COVID champions ranks. There are 11 COVID champions in the Sturgeley Ward, but uh, it is never enough. COVID champions are um, a program that's been put in place by Birmingham City Council to provide citizens with information and first hand updates so that they can uh, play an active role in the community to convey accurate information about vaccination, testing and COVID in general, which can, can be helpful for them, be helpful for their families and for the community uh, that they live with. And so you can go on the website of the council and you can join uh, and can apply to become a COVID champion, which will give you, as I said, first hand access to up to date information. And so you can play an active role in the community to uh, also fight a little bit of the spread of misinformation that through social media and other channels we have experienced as of late. And, and that includes very uh, important things like vaccines and testing and COVID rates and COVID measures in general.
Thank you. That's that's good because uh, I do recommend people become uh, COVID champions. Uh, I know I am. I disseminate information out to people um, and organisations in Sturge Reward, and I think it is helpful for people to know. Plus, anything that comes out from the cabinet member Paulette Hamilton, um, that's very good. If you don't mind staying in case there's any questions. Um, we had hoped to have um, um, uh, what's, um, Hamira Sultan uh, about Green Champion Programme, but unfortunately she couldn't get logged in tonight. So um, I've got I've asked if she can be rescheduled for the next Cancer World Forum, which will be in May. <clears throat> Details will come out. Uh, in the near future, but we'll move on then to a um, big topic, which I feel is very important, is the clean air zone. Um, and tonight we've got with us Peter Edwards um, to tell us all about the clean air zone. I'll re reiterate, please put your questions in the chat bar and there may be other questions as well that uh, have come in uh, during the, the week. OK, over to you, Peter. Thank you very much, Councillor. Um, please bear with me a second. I will just share my screen in order to um, bring some slides up. Uh, sorry, um, I think I was muted there. Um, can everybody hear me now? Apologies, I'm just trying to share my screen and my slides. Um, so the slides should be on screen now. Um, so yes, good evening. My name is Peter Edwards, uh, Principal Clean Air Zone Officer within the Clean Air Zone team. Here to here this evening to talk to you about the upcoming Clean Air Zone. Um, so we've got some slides just talking about why it is that we're doing a Clean Air Zone, why it's necessary some important information about simply how it will operate, um, where it is, those kind of nitty gritty details. And then finally, in terms of uh, what support and uh, in financial incentives are available to help people uh, adapt to the changes. Uh, and then also we're just going to do a little bit about the uh, Birmingham Transport Plan to set the wider context of, of what's going on with transport and air quality in the city. Um, so first of all, it's important to kind of couch um, why we need a clean air zone um, and some of the, the uh, statistics on screen are quite startling and I'm not going to go into all of them you can see these these are the slides can be shared after the meeting but I think it's important to note that air pollution poor air quality in this city is linked to the deaths of 900 people a year um, you can see some of the diseases that it's linked to on the left hand side there um, and I think it's also important to to note kind of who this impacts the most so this uh, poor air quality impacts on 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 the elderly and the young especially people with existing health conditions so this is a real health emergency in this city. The air quality is 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 not uh, um, within the legal limits uh, and in order to combat that we'll be introducing a clean air zone. This is some more information just about kind of what what the, the scale of the issue here is in Birmingham. So of 2.8 million journeys that are made into uh, Birmingham each day, 50% of those uh, are made by private vehicles, which is quite an inefficient way of moving people um, when you consider the size and uh, of a vehicle and it's carrying one, maybe two people compared to a bus, a train, a tram, or obviously the, 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 the cleanest and greenest way of traveling, of course, of walking and cycling. So this is the scale of the issue that we have. And in particular, we have too many high polluting uh, diesel vehicles entering the zone, and that is leading to, to the the, the problems that we've detailed on the previous slide. It's also really important to point out that 250,000 car journeys in Birmingham are commit are, are less than one mile. Uh, so everyone is very wedded to their cars, but actually these are the sorts of journeys that could be could be changed uh, to walking and cycling, and that's what we hope to achieve. Uh, part of what we hope to achieve with the clean air zone. So. We've, we know the problem now and what, what is Birmingham City Council going to do about it? So 
the clean air zone is a defined area where targeted action is taken to improve air quality. So in Birmingham, and the next slide will give a bit more detail on that, it's the city centre. And a clean air zone, it's important to note at this point, is not a congestion charge. It will not charge all vehicles to enter the zone. It will only uh, charge the higher polluting vehicles that don't meet the emission standards. And those vehicles will be asked to pay a daily fee. Um, as you can see on screen, there's different types of um, clean air zones. Birmingham is launching a class D clean air zone is the, the most restrictive clean air zone, which will charge buses, taxis, HGVs, vans and private vehicles. You may have seen in the media that Bath um, went live with their clean air zone on Monday and theirs is a class C. So they are not char charging private motor vehicles. They've decided to go buses, taxis and, and HGVs. As is similar to in line to what uh, London has introduced with their ultra low emission zone. So it has the same, um, the same restrictions and the same compliance standards. The compliance standards that I'll talk about in a minute are um, the same across all clean air zones nationally. It's important to add that we will be the third clean air zone after London and Bath, but there are plans afoot for Bristol, Manchester and lots of other major cities. So uh, the, the clean air zones will become the norm within the next few years. So Birmingham's clean air zone, as we've already talked about, is a type D clean air zone. It will cover the uh, all of the roads within the A4540 middle ring road, but not the ring road itself. So from the 1st of June, and I probably should have said that right at the start of the presentation, the clean air zone will go live on the 1st of June. And from the 1st of June, if you travel into the area shown onto the screen in a non-compliant vehicle, so that's a vehicle that doesn't meet the emission standards, then that vehicle will be subject to a daily charge. The charges are £8 for a car, ta taxi or a van or £50 for a, a heavy goods vehicle, coach or bus. And what we need you to do in preparation for, for the clean air zone is to check if your vehicle would be subject to that charge. What you can do on our website and the, the slide at the end will show you this. Our website is brumbreathes.co.uk. Front and centre of that home page is a link to the government's vehicle checker. It's a very simple process. Simply log in, put your registration in and then it will tell you whether or not you will be charged. If it tells you you're not going to be charged in Bath, but you are in Birmingham and you find that confusing, that's because, as I said on the previous slide, Bath is not is not charging private motor vehicles. Um, so that's that's the area of the clean air zone. It will be coming in from from the 1st of June. You can check your vehicle online. Um, I'll talk about the revenue and stuff um, in, in some later slides. Um, so that is where the zone will be. It's important to note that you will not be charged to travel around the middle ring uh, around the middle ring road. But the moment you cross that ring road into the city centre, we'll look, there will be 300 plus signs kind of signs informing you of the clean air zone and then there will be cameras on the barrier and within the inside of the clean air zone they will pick you up and if you are non-compliant they will potentially you will be you will need to pay a charge it's important really important to note that you as a driver will not get a notification you will not get a text message or an email saying you have just driven in the birmingham clean air zone you now need to pay it's the driver's responsibility to be aware and to make that payment. The payment window is 13 days, so you can pay on the day that you're in the clean air zone. You can pay six days in advance or you can pay six days prior uh, post. Sorry. Um, it's also important to note that this is a, a 24 hour charging period um, from midnight to midnight. So it is not you drive into the zone uh, at 9 a.m. So the way it works is you drive in at 9 a.m. You can drive in and out as many times as you want until midnight of that day, not until 9 a.m. the following day. It's a really important to note. So if you drive in at 10 p.m. and you drive out at 2 a.m., you've crossed two charging days and that's potentially two charges. So I think that's a really important detail for people to be aware of. Um, if your vehicle isn't compliant, there's no real action for you to take other than, of course, we would like you to consider using that vehicle less walking and cycling using public transport, but you would not be charged. You do not need to apply for an exemption. You will not need to pay if you do drive into the zone post June. Um, 
We've talked about where the zone will be, how it will operate. And it's important now to talk about kind of some of the other measures that we're putting in place to help support residents and businesses within the city. Before we talk about the, res uh, the exemptions that are shown here on screen, I think it's important to kind of set the context of where these came from. Um, so in 2018, a consultation was conducted. That consultation was not should Birmingham City Council implement a clean air zone. We were mandated to do so by government and we needed to do something about air quality in the city. That consultation was there to identify how it should work and who should be the most, who should receive the most support. And off the back of that consultation, which received close to, I think, 11,000 uh, responses, um, a suite of exemptions and financial incentives were, were set. Um, so on screen, you can see the key ones. I'm not going to talk too much about the residence exemption because I'm guessing that most people in this forum live in Sturchley or don't live in the clean air zone, but residents within the clean air zone, if you've got friends or family, colleagues who live within the clean air zone, um, they can um, access up to a two year exemption. It's important to know all of these all of these exemptions you have to apply for. They don't happen automatically. You need to come to the Brumbreeds website, submit some information, create an application. We will assess it and then we will grant you an exemption if you are eligible. The one that is perhaps most relevant to the audience on this call, which you might have commuting into the city centre, is um, individuals travelling into the clean air zone for work purposes and it, who earn less than £30,000 a year and work for more than 80, 18 hours a week within the zone. Those people we're calling clean air zone workers, that exemption is for one year. So you can apply to us, prove those criteria on screen, then we will grant you a one year exemption. Similar with um, commercial vehicles, with people running business fleets who have fleet vehicles that may not meet the compliance standards, they can also apply for an exemption. The other one is visitors to hospitals, uh, well, to hospitals and medical centres. So it's uh, Birmingham Children's Cent Hospital, uh, Badger Medical Centre and uh, Bath Row. So these are serve, these are centres that offer out of hours or emergency services. And if you visit those centres as a patient or dropping somebody off in a non-compliant vehicle, you will be able to be issued um, with a voucher. Um, and that voucher will give you that charging day off. Um, I would like to go, the reason I went back a step a moment ago was because we seem to have dropped a slide which is about the compliance standards. Um, so I can just talk about that briefly. The most important thing for you to do is to go um, onto the government vehicle checker and check your vehicle, but the compliance standard is Euro 6 for petrol, so that, uh, sorry, Euro 6 for diesel, and that is most vehicles from September 2015 onwards, and Euro 4 for petrol, which is 2006 onwards. So you can see that the restrictions are quite are much higher for diesel vehicles because they emit more of the nitrous oxide, which we're trying to reduce. But please just go to the vehicle checker on our website and check your vehicle. That's the most important thing that you can do. In addition to those other um, exemptions that you can apply for, there are, there's a range of other exemptions for kind of more specialist vehicles. So I'll just run through those quickly. Um, it's important to note that having a blue badge does not give you an exemption from clean air zone charging. However, if you have a disabled passenger tax classification for your vehicle, so this is a tax classification that's listed on your V5 logbook um, because you are in receipt of certain disability benefits, then you can potentially access a, uh, a national exemption from all clean air zones. So this isn't administered by us, this is a tax classification that you can get from the DVLA. There's information about that on our website. Motorcycles are exempt and then specialist vehicles such as showman's vehicles, kind of for circuses, uh, emergency services vehicles, gritters, cranes, this sort of thing can access an exemption. Historic vehicles, so over 40 years old. And then finally, community and school transport. So this is your not-for-profit ring and ride type services. So they can also access an exemption. I'll just have a drink, bear with me. OK, so we talked about the exemptions. The exemptions are there uh, uh, as kind of to give people some breathing space, to give them a bit of time to adapt to the clean air zone coming in when they won't have to pay charges. 
what we have following on from that is a package of financial incentives that we've secured from central government. You can see those on screen and again probably the most relevant to this audience is the scrappage scheme um, which will launch in the coming months. Um, we have just recently finished the procurement process for that and we'll be making an announcement very shortly. Um, whereby people who have a non-compliant vehicle who work in the zone will be able to access a scrappage scheme and then in return for scrapping your non-compliant vehicle you will be offered two options either two thousand pounds to off the price of a of a new compliant vehicle and it's important to note that it doesn't have to be a brand new vehicle it just needs to be one that meets the compliance standards or you can have £2,000 as a mobility credit and that will be credited to a SWIFT account to be used on public transport, um, on the public transport network administered by Transport for West Midlands. That scheme is not live yet. The exemptions are, are, are alive and ready to be applied for today. This scrappage scheme will be um, ready in the coming months. If you're interested in the scrappage scheme, you can sign up to an expression of interest on our website and that way you will be notified as soon as that scheme goes live and you'll be able to apply. But if you're going to be eligible for the scrappage scheme, you're likely to be eligible for the exemption. So apply for the exemption, get yourself some breathing space so you wouldn't have to pay the charge until the 1st of June 2022 and then you can explore your options with the scrappage scheme. The other two pots of money, one is to help SMEs in the West Midlands, so small medium enterprises, um, upgrade their coach and HGV fleets. That, that pot of money is, a lot, is live for application at the moment, more information on the website. And similarly, we have a pot of funding for Birmingham's Hackney Carriage and private hire drivers. And again, that scheme is live at the moment and proving incredibly popular. So just to show the impact that the Clean Air Zone is already having before it's gone live, is that we've already given um, grant funding out to close to 800 Birmingham licensed taxi drivers. So those vehicles have already been converted from higher polluting, um, non-compliant, most of them diesel vehicles into cleaner, greener vehicles. So the Clean Air Zone is having an impact before it has even um, gone live. As I said at the start of the, the presentation, um, I think it's important to kind of couch this in, in the wider context. So the clean air zone is, is obviously a, a massive project um, and is seeking to improve the, the, the air quality within the city. However, that's not the only initiative that's going on in the city at the moment. Um, and Birmingham has a transport plan. Uh, so I just wanted to touch on that because a lot of it is all linked together. And there are four big visions, big moves for, for the transport plan. Um, one of which is to reallocate road space away from private motor vehicles and to give more space to people walking, uh, cycling and using public transport. So you may have seen some of these measures in Sturgey already where some parking has been removed to aid with social distancing. I've seen that on my local high street in Kings Heath, but also the in, uh, introduction of um, buses, uh, bus lanes, sorry, bus priority and new cycle lanes. And some of this stuff has been accelerated as part of the response to COVID-19. Birmingham City Council has recently been given uh, uh, some further funding from the Emergency Active Travel Fund, a government fund, to, to implement more of this work. The next one is to transform the city centre to make it again a nicer place to walk, cycle and to, to help public transport pass through that area. Um, so further pedestrianisation schemes. Anyone who's tried to cycle across the city centre will know that it's, it's not easy, it's not pleasant. Um, so measures to improve that. And at the moment there is a consultation out for cross city bus services because at the moment cross city bus services are just simply not feasible because of there's too many private motor vehicles. But there are measures being put in to restrict private motor vehicles and give better access um, for buses. Then the next one and perhaps most relevant to, the, to this audience is, is to prioritise active travel in local neighbourhoods. So this isn't just about Birmingham City Centre, about the area covered by the clean air zone. This is to try and help people walk and cycle those, those short journeys in their local neighbourhoods. So in Kings Eve, they've implemented low traffic neighbourhood. Some measures have gone into um, uh, into Bourneville um, and Lazelle's um, cycle lanes, bus priority measures again. Um, so it's just to say that it isn't just about the city centre. 
And then finally is trying to manage demand by using parking as kind of a demand management tool. So all of the car parking, uh, free on-street car parking will be removed within the, the clean air zone. It will no longer be free and trying to discourage people from, from driving into the zone um, that way as well, making it less more competitive with, with, with bus services and, and public transport. So that kind of covers the transport plan. And the final slide is then just to kind of, again, put this in an even wider context of the climate emergency and just to kind of say that this isn't purely the responsibility of Birmingham City Council. We can't do this alone. We need the help of, of kind of communities and individuals and businesses. Um, obviously, Birmingham has set a zero carbon target, target by 2030. Um, and the clean air zone is in part of that, but also following on from that is what you can see at the bottom of the side is kind of a significant expansion of the city's electric vehicle charging points, purchase of 20 hydrogen buses that will go onto the, the city's roads ahead of the Commonwealth Games, and then also looking at um, electric hackney carriages because we know that um, it's difficult for them to upgrade to electric vehicles. There's only one on the market. So just to kind of finish by saying there's a lot of other uh, schemes and incentives going on across the city to try and make Birmingham a, a cleaner, greener and more pleasant place to live. So um, thank you very much for listening. I would encourage you to, to, to head to our website. I hope I've answered most of your questions, but of course there is the, the, the question and answer box um, on the side there. So I will take the slides and stop sharing my screen and start to take questions, I guess. Um, my turn now. Right. Thank you. Um, there was a question, anonymous. If the council are re reallocating road space, why are they still putting up cyclist dismount dismount signs? Um, e.g. on Pope's Lane. Um, as a cyclist myself, uh, as somebody who cycles myself, I uh, used to cycle to work before we were working from home. Um, yes, they're the, I, I, I can't answer that question. They're the bane of, of a cyclist's life. I can't comment on individual schemes. Um, what I would say is that the government, as part of the kind of response to COVID in, in quite a big move, has actually published guidance whereby they won't fund schemes that um, don't meet certain standards and I would really hope that uh, we start to see the back of cyclist dismount signs but uh, yeah I don't I don't know that that specific location or that specific um, scheme. Um, I put a question in um, you know the fine for the uh, clean air zone you know, um, how is the money collected you know um, I know you, uh, you know, what way can people pay or how, do, how, how does the council um, or enforcement get the money back, you know, for fines? It's a, it's a really good question and for some reason I, I seem to have lost uh, one key slide. Which, so I'm glad you asked that question. So thank you very much. So um, yeah, we talked about the fact that um, motorists wouldn't get a notification. They wouldn't get an email. It's the motorist responsibility. The payment side of um, clean air zones is all being managed by central government. So it will either be online at .gov.uk forward slash clean air zone or over the phone. Um, it's really important to note that revenue from the clean air zone is is ring fence to only be allowed to be spent on public tr on sustainable transport measures so there's been some inf misinformation about that that clean the clean air zone is 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 a congestion charge is a tax to to raise funds for the for the city council it's written into law that that any money that is raised by the clean air zone that birmingham city council uh, receives can only be used for schemes such as that pedestrianisation scheme in the city centre and for some of the active travel measures we've already talked about um, but it but it's it will be collected by central government by the, by their 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 infrastructure their 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 systems but thank you for for checking that question uh, i've got another one right. i've got another one if that's the case to add on to that there is um 
there are people that don't always have computers and things like that. So I think that has to be added into the equation. Um, and one of the, um, also I think money needs to be spent on improving the cycle route and, and along the canals because the money could be spent there um, because I think it would be a good thing. And, and I'll shut up now because I'm sure there's lots of other people um, who've got other questions. Councillor, it's Karen here. There's one question uh, which was right at the beginning, which is what is the plan to deal with the high level of toxic fumes at the corner of Dogpool Lane and Pershall Road by the Dogpool Hotel? I th and I think the one below gives the, the level, I think must, uh, must be related yeah. to that. Yeah. Do I have to wait? Yeah, OK. Yeah, I know the junction well. Uh, it's it used to be on my commute to to work. It's it's not a nice junction for pollution, traffic, or safety. Um, I'm not aware of a a scheme specifically around that junction, as it were. Um, but I think we talked about the the bus prioritisation measures, the cycle lanes, the improved infrastructure. Um, the Ray Valley is nearby to help people, um, or, and the canal and the Blue Route is not that far away on the Brist Bristol Road. So there are alternatives, and I think what we we need to see, and hopefully the clean air zone will deter, is that some of those vehicles travelling from Sturgeley, Bourneville, Cottage, further afield will simply stop travelling into the city centre because they will be charged and hopefully those people will use the train, will use the bus um, or will cycle. Um, so whilst there isn't a specific scheme for that very junction, all of the measures, the clean air zone and the other measures I talked about in those last couple of slides should be um, improving the, the, the emissions of the vehicles that are passing through because there will always be vehicles passing down that main arterial route. But what the clean air do, zone is seeking to do is to, to really reduce the number of those vehicles that are higher polluting uh, vehicles in particular. Um, there's another question as well. When can um, when can we have an, a low traffic neighbourhood on Cecil Road um, if we are prioritising active travel? Um, again, <laughs> I used to cycle down Cecil Road and get into um, constant uh, battles with motorists who turn right into it and unfortunately don't pay any attention to the rules. Um, what I would say is that with the transport plan at the moment, there's a platform called Commonplace and I can put um, a link in the chat. I've just put a link to the government vehicle checker in response to the question at 719. So that's the link to the government vehicle checker. What I would say is that at the moment, the council, because of this emergency active travel fund, is, is seeking the views of residents. Um, and what we've seen in Kings Heath is the implementation with the bollards, which actually physically stop people. So that could be implemented on Cecil Road and that small little protect because that should be a low traffic neighborhood. That's the idea of those no right turns. Um, so you can go on that commonplace platform and make suggestions. It's for walking and cycling. So what do you think would improve it? And, and the simple one there is to is to enforce the no right turn off dad's lane. It's quite helpful being on a residence forum for, for an area that I know well. Um, so let me while while we're looking for the next question, let me find the kind of the commonplace platform and I'll put a link in the chat. So let me put that in um, Cecil Road. So 7.30, that question was, I've put the link in response. Um, we've talked about that. Um, OK, I think oh, I think that covers all the questions. What about improving cycle routes along the River Ray and the canal? I mean, yeah, absolutely. I think the, the, the there are limitations to the Ray Valley and the canal in terms of they're dark, they're unlit, so it's more of a summer exercise. Um, so personally, and I think the council is recognising this, that the infrastructure we need to be putting in in the future needs to be of the standard of the blue route or as close to that so that it's on road but segregated and safe so that it can be used all year round because we've heard stories about the Ray Valley. I used to commute along it uh, at night. Um, and it's not necessarily safe all year round. So unless it's lit um, and made 
more visible. I'm not sure that that Ray Valley will ever be um, the answer. I think the answer is to put safe, segregated uh, infrastructure onto onto main roads where people want to travel and need to travel rather than pushing cyclists onto canals and um, into parks um, because we need to take cycling more seriously as a proper form of transport. It is a leisure activity but it's also a very important um, piece of, of Birmingham's transport plan because where we're going at the moment is not sustainable. Uh, we need more people to walk and cycle so we need to make it easier. Can't You can't see the link I posted. Um, I can put it in again, the, uh, the commonplace one. Um, so I've just published that again. Just put, uh, I'll do it again, sorry. There you go. So that's the link to uh, the commonplace platform where you can request changes for walking and cycling, etc. I've put that at 740. Hopefully you can see that now. Thank you, great. <laughs> um, I think I've answered all the questions there, but as I say, please visit our website, brumbreeze.co.uk. There's a wealth of information on there. If you, this will be recorded, obviously, so please share this with friends, colleagues, family. The only other thing to say is that if you can't find the answer on our website, then you can email, and I'll put this in the chat as well, uh, cleanair at birmingham.gov.uk, and me and my team monitor that. Um, so I'm just putting that into the chat now. In, uh, up, um, yeah, that's correct. There you go. That's in the chat as well. So if you can't find the answer you're looking for on our website, um, please, please do drop us a line. But um, if there's no further questions, I'll put myself on, on mute. So. Right. Thank you very much for Peter. And uh, please, please um, make all your comments that you want. Um, you know, it's uh, about um, clean air zone or Birmingham connected about uh, suggestions for uh, road, tra road traffic neighbourhoods or anything like that. You know, good and bad and indifferent. Um, I think we'll move on now if there's no other questions. Has anyone got any questions at all? Don't think they have. Now we're going to do about uh, the war plan, the Sturchley war plan, um, and uh, it's time to update it. So have we, are we going to put it on the screen as it is or, or not, Karen? Uh, I'm afraid I haven't done that. If you bear with me, I should go and find it in my files. So keep talking and I should try and find it. Bear with me. Um, I mean, it, it's been a, a, a busy year, and uh, and how you know things have, have been uh, what we've been doing, and um, what we've been, what's been progressing um, in Sturchley. I mean, you know, things have been difficult um, because of COVID, um, but there have been improvements on the High Street with the new bins and benches and also um, in another month or so there's going to be the painting of the railings and bollards and um, you know that is out of the uh, Tesco section 106 monies um, and um, it, there's also the shop front grants um, which there's been some interest in um, at the moment um people are you know there's people are taking it cautiously obviously um but th th people can contact me if they're interested and i think the um the ward plan is coming up on the screen now all right oh karen's getting it up Right. I'm hoping that the next meeting we can hold um, by um, Microsoft uh, Teams. Um, it will be more interactive so people can ask questions 
and it will be better and you haven't got to listen to my voice droning on all that you think. Um, but I'm, I've am i got um, an era coming about the Green, uh, Green Champions programme and also um, about the Commonwealth Games and I've got some information about that after we've done the ward plan and my update. Um, uh, just just see. having some technical issues, Mary, just bear <laughs> with me. I'll keep rabbiting keep on. Keep talking. Um, we've got um, the, uh, no, no, the seven capital site. There are, there's movement afoot there. We've got the um, Taylor Wimpia building. Uh, I've got the plans in for houses, um, you know, what they'll look like and hopefully it won't take too long before things get started on the site and also the cooperative housing development, which seems very exciting. Um, and through the businesses, Artifact and Loaf and the Birmingham Bike Foundry as well. Uh, they will be um, in conjunction as, as a cooperative um, and that will be good. Um, so the rest of the seven capital land um, will be possible, did hear the possible supermarket and a gym and two other retail premises, but that's not confirmed yet. Um, still waiting to hear. The Taylor Wimpy site, the Hazel Wells of Ford House Lane, that's going, uh, I think they're all completed now. And um, there's been really, I think it's gone quite well and finished, uh, they finished last year and I think all the residents are in. So if there's any here tonight, welcome to them. Um, and I know we're looking forward to the Commonwealth Games uh, next year. Hopefully all goes well. Um, and there's going to be uh, the Commonwealth Games celebrating community. Um, each ward gets a, a fund of money um, to, for the, it's basically for the community to use together the uh, small grants that can be allotted um, out and to see what Sturchley can do for the Commonwealth Games. So we'll be more on that at the next meeting. Um, and, you know, we probably have a get the, all the Sturchley is made up of so many different um, community groups, um, like the Neighbourhood Forum, Sturchley The Way Forward, to see what we can do um, and others um, to celebrate the Commonwealth Games um, here. Um, because I think we'd, after what we've had the last year, we do need some sort of celebration. Um, although I think it's 500 or 490 something days to the Commonwealth Games. Um, so it's thinking caps on and uh, see what we can do right across Sturchley because we've got faith groups, we've got churches, so coming together or, you know, socially distanced as we can, um, you know, have, have something of an enjoyable time and see how we can plan for that. Is it everything all right, Karen? Uh, cancel a lot. For some reason, it won't share that okay. I can get my computer on screen, which people will not be interested in, um, but I can't, it won't open the, the ward plan. I'm really, really sorry. Um, I wasn't aware you wanted it on screen. Um, I will keep, if there, I will keep going if there are any other Q and A's, general Q and A's, um, and I will get it up as soon as I can. My apologies. I do apologise. Um, um, I mean, if people have got ideas, I have had some ideas uh, about the ward plan. Um, you know, with the tragic murder that happened um, uh, to Sarah Everard, 
um, to improve lighting um, so that women can feel safe coming home at night um, and uh, also um, you know it, I mean Peter did mention about the um, the river along the river ray I do feel that lighting needs to be improved uh, along there I have um, rattled a few cages about that but I don't know um, I don't think it can be done at the moment. Um, I've been going out um, for the last three or four weeks doing litter picking, um, improving you know, areas, doing a small section at a time with one person, one other person or two, and obviously spread out very well. Um, it, so making the area look, imp improve it. Um, and also I'm just looking to see if there are any questions if anybody's got any suggestions or questions please put them in the chat um, what else have we got um, with the dementia ward update um, is, there a, is there an update on that Karen? I'm sorry, Councillor. Is is there a dementia ward update at all? Um, I I do know that um, Leaf Creative Arts, who are um, leading on the dementia friendly Sturchley, that they are in the process of finalising the posters that will go into uh, the shops, and their their intention is to do something on. Uh, the national day alzheimer's day um so again it would be really useful if perhaps uh they were able to come to the next meeting yeah, to good. um present what they had done because it sounds really quite exciting they've got a scheme of work over the next um uh 12 months they've been refunded through the uh Sally Oak neighborhood network scheme to carry on with that really important work well, that's great. I mean, that would be great. We'll add them to the next meeting as well. And uh, as things start to open up, I mean, um, it is good to see, um, you know, uh, some of the care homes opening up as well. Um, the one in our, uh, in this ward, uh, Andrew Cohen, um, they start, they opened up, I think it was Monday. Um, and uh, it's good to see uh, re residents getting visits from their families. Not all homes are doing it at the moment. I'm still waiting um, because the home my husband's in, um, a couple of the carers came down with COVID, but um, we would live and wait in hope. But I know Leaf, Leaf Creative Arts are doing a very, very good job and it's really, um, really good and as things open up that will be really nice to see um have i got any more updates um i've it, you know i'm always available i know i'm not doing my i am doing my ward um, um advice surgery but i have to do it virtually by um microsoft teams but uh Anytime, please. Uh, it's the first Saturday of every month, uh, from 10:30 till 11:30 at the moment. As things start to expand, it will be good to do um, face to face, but it's too early at the moment. Uh, are there any questions? No. Um, Mary, if it helps, if you would yeah. like, I can read out the priorities that you've currently got yeah. in your ward if plan. You can, would, yeah. would that help? Um, yes, it would. Just bear with me then. I don't. I think it's because I can't be presenter and share my screen. So my I apologies. Do, I do apologise. I should have said. So, but never mind. So the first priority that the ward had was everyone within the new ward boundary of Sturchley feels included and has an opportunity to get involved. 
the two current actions in there at the moment are obviously this was pre COVID uh, micro neighbourhood residence meetings held on a regular basis across the um, the three micro neighbourhoods that cover in Sturchley uh, Ward. And then the second one was to rotate Ward forum meetings across uh, the ward. Um, so that that was the first the first um, priority. Obviously, well, COVID has that. had an impact on on that one. Micro neighbourhoods to anyone that may be uh, here, here this evening who may be new to, to Sturchley, they are um, the Ascension Church on Pineapple Grove, uh, just off Pineapple Road, uh, Dell Road Church and Sturchley Baths and, and all Sturchley around there. OK, the second priority, which was ward wide, uh, building upon the already proactive volunteering and active citizenship within the ward, grow a sense of inclusivity, social cohesion and neighbourliness across the ward, having a specific emphasis on young people, provision and opportunities. So the first um, action that was within that was to develop ward recognition and celebration events, which obviously because of COVID is going to be uh, very difficult. Um, and then the second one was working towards being the first formally recognised dementia friendly community in Birmingham as part of the Selly Oak Neighbourhood Network Scheme. Uh, obviously that was written in 2019. As an update, obviously uh, Sturchy was awarded uh, that status in 2019 and the support work for that has now uh, been handed over to Leaf Creative Arts uh, to continue. So those were the two that were in the um, actions in the priority two. Uh, priority three, which was ward wide, was a clean and green ward. Again, I suspect some of these will have been impacted by uh, lockdown. Um, but the first one was to develop uh, community litter picks and community graffiti hit squads across uh, the ward. The second action was to support organisations such as Green Sturchley, Sturchley in Bloom and the Fruit and Nut Village in developing greener spaces by the community for the community. The third one was more appropriate street furniture, bins and benches. The fourth one was to reduce fly tipping and litter grot spots. And then the uh, final one in that priority three around clean and green was to look to see how Sturchy can become cleaner and greener to improve the environment and air quality. So that was priority three. Priority four was um, specific to the Pineapple Estate and was the revitalization of Dad's Lane Community Association and community influence on Camp Hill railway line, with the action being to give support and guidance to local residents and key community stakeholders to redevelop Dad's Lane Community Association as a vibrant community asset for uh, the neighbourhood. Um, and obviously there's been a lot of um, ongoing support and activity there. The second action was to ensure that local residents are aware of and able to be involved in any future consultations in relation to the Camp Hill Railway line, of which I know there have been uh, specific ward forum uh, meetings um, that have covered that. Priority five was for the Cottridge end of the ward, uh, your, one of your three micro neighbourhoods, ensuring that this new part of the ward is included and networked into any new developments. And that was uh, again probably affected by uh, lockdown. The two actions were develop council surgeries within the neighbourhood and transport improvement line. And then priority six, which covered the central Sturchley area, including the high street, ensure meaningful engagement. Uh, it actually says, still says with the seven capital development, obviously we do know some of that has changed and developing a positive image for the high street. Um, the actions within that priority were 
ensuring community involvement with the future high street fund proposal and the positive development of the high street. The timely rollout of the proposed section 106 fund improvements for the high street and ensure meaningful dialogue with Seven Capital and the proposed development of their site. So those were the six priorities and the actions uh, within them. Um, and possibly need to, um, we will need to update uh, that. Yeah. And then um, a final one, just as a, as a, um, a reminder is that now with the ongoing, uh, the forthcoming Commonwealth Games, um, there will need to be um, a prior, a general priority added in relation to the Commonwealth Games because of the Celebrating Communities grant that is it, that is coming. So sorry, I know that's not as good as having it up on the screen. My apologies. We'll, we'll have that on next time. Um, are there any suggestions what people um, want to add or say or questions? Missed any? Right, I've got um, the Neighbourhood Forum would be happy to facilitate discussion about the ward plan at one of our meetings. Right, OK. Well, a copy could go out to um, the forum and, um, you know, for, for suggestions. Um, and what? what that would be an idea um, and could they go in the comments too? Councillor I will recirculate it. Um, Laura oh. I can't operate the Q&A and look at um, the ward plan priorities at the same time so I, I will recirculate the ward plan and priorities to the full distribution list for um, uh, for this ward. I do apologise to everyone, but uh, if people have got suggestions, um, please uh, email me or Karen, and um, you know then we can possibly uh, in May, um, you know, if, if the neighbourhood forum, you know, can circulate it, we can go back to the at the meeting in May when we have uh, the next meeting. Of I think it's the middle of May. Like I say, the date will come out anyway, um, and um, we will people's ideas and suggestions can, can come out. Okay, I've had. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, and I mean, there, there is update about Bourneville Lane. Um, I know the um, low traffic neighbourhood. Um, um, it got off to a, a sticky start, um, but I think um, um, the, uh, the there is going to be money spent on Bourneville Lane. Um, for the traffic that has been paid for by Cadbury's uh, or Mondelez as they're called now um, and work will begin possibly next month um, and uh, you know, because there's been tremendous um, uh, issues with lorries going up there getting stuck uh, forgetting there's a, a bridge and then having to reverse all the way down um, and the roads like, like reversing into Bond Street, Regent Street um, and it's caused chaos over the years but with residents and highways and Mondelez we've I've met and uh, the work like I say will begin. Um, I've got a list of the figures for the section 106. Um, so far, the total amount of money was 177,000. 
£615. Uh, £50,000 was spent on the library frontage. Um, there's money set aside for the bins, bit benches and um, uh, cycle hoops and the painting of railings and ballards and um, uh, the uh, planting of um, planting. Um, there's money set aside for shop front grants. Um, at the moment, there's about £40,915 to be allocated um, and it's public realm, realm expense. I mean, all the, the money has to be, um, anything that's spent, is for, it has to be sustainable. Um, but there have been ideas and they've come in. Officers get a look at them and they decide. It's not my decision, it is the officers that decide. Is there anything else? I mean, people, uh, if there are any businesses who are interested in the shopfront grants, I've got the condition of grant aid I can forward on um, and with the procedures what to do. So if people are interested or traders are interested. Is there anything else? Also in the cottage area, um, there's going to be some work done by Cottridge School um, because um, they've, um, they're going to do a small low traffic neighbourhood there so that um, they're dropping off um, the, the children. I mean, at the moment, the teachers and headmaster have to stand in the middle of the road um, and it's been quite difficult, um, you know, because of cars going down. So they've looked at that for low traffic neighbourhoods, safer routes to school, it's called. So that, that is out for consultation with parents, carers and teachers at uh, Cottridge School. So um, if anybody wants, as a child at Cottridge School and wishes to make comment, please email me and I'll send the um, the details and um, the comments need to be in by the 31st of March. Councillor Locke, there's one more question. Are oh, there going to be planters along the high street? Yes, there are. Yeah, they've been budgeted for that. I don't know how many, but um, the officer will be coming out to uh, relook at it and uh, in the, I'd say probably April, end of April, beginning of May. Because we have to think about the width of the pavements in Sturchley as well. And I've just put another question in, uh, whether the skip will be removed from the pavement in front of the Sturchley carpet shop. Is that the one by Mayfield Road? Because if it's on the Persia Road, um, I can ask highways to move it. If it's on the side on Mayfield Road, that uh, is what is classed as the curtilage and that's part of his land, I can contact them and ask them to get it moved. But um, he owns that land. And I could ask him to uh, uh, get in touch with the skip people to remove it. But it should be cleared every, every week or two. There are no further questions, Councillor. Well, um, thank you very much. If you've got anything else you wish to ask, please uh, email me. Um, it's been good. 
Uh, next time we'll have a bit more interactive and in, eventually sometime this year we'll be able to have a meeting in at Birchley Baths maybe and um, obviously cautious as, as Dino said earlier but um, hopefully we're turning a corner with the pandemic and uh, please be safe and um, I hope um, it, people who've had their, the vaccine we may have had the second one by then and it'll be, things will be a lot better. I can wish you all good evening and uh, to stay safe.